All right, it's Illinois in Focus Daily. I'm Greg Bishop. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for America's Talking Network. Yesterday was day one of the Democratic National Convention, uh, where you had a whole array of speakers taking to the podium, uh, talking uh, about Joe Biden, about Kamala Harris, uh, and also very critical of Donald Trump. Uh, and I, that was something that seemed to be just a running theme. Uh, so here's uh, here's some highlights. Michigan State Senator Mallory uh, McElroy, uh, she uh, brought out a, a large book, uh, a prop of sorts, of uh, Project 2025 that Democrats are working to connect to Trump. Uh, and uh, She also uh, discussed what she said is a, a fear of a lot of uh, Democrats that if Trump gets into office, he's going to use the Department of Justice against his political opponents. Donald Trump would be able to weaponize the Department of Justice to go after his political opponents. He could even turn the FBI into his own personal police force. That is not how it works in America. That's how it works in dictatorships. But you've got Republicans uh, pointing to the Department of Justice uh, having used the FBI to raid Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort, uh, charging him in New York state with uh, crimes that were misdemeanors, uh, beefed up to felonies, and a whole host of other things. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's uh, something that's obviously being criticized from last night's speech. Uh, but it wasn't just, uh, you know, uh, elected officials from other parts of the country taking the stage. You even had Kamala Harris take the stage uh, briefly last night just to kind of welcome the crowd and uh, gear everybody up to hear from President Joe Biden, who she is aiming to replace after he announced that he is not seeking a second term uh, for the presidency. And looking out, looking out at everyone tonight, I see the beauty of our great nation, people from every corner of our country and every walk of life are here, united by our shared vision for the future of our country. And this November, we will come together and declare with one voice, as one people, we are moving forward. And the United Center uh, packed with uh, Democrats from all across the country. Uh, of course, uh, being uh, there earlier on the day, uh, seeing how empty it was inside the convention hall, then seeing the uh, wide shots on TV, uh, definitely a, a lot of uh, a lot of passion at the United Center. Uh, but the array of speakers continued. A pretty jam-packed lineup last night, including uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who lost to Donald Trump in 2016. Donald Trump fell asleep at his own trial. And when he woke up, he made his own kind of history. The first person to run for president with 34 felony convictions. As vice president, as vice president, Kamala sat in the Situation Room. And you can hear people chanting, lock him up. Which, when that was happening uh, under the uh, 2016 Trump campaign, when rally goers were saying, lock her up, uh, that was widely criticized. Uh, and uh, Trump even you know, acknowledged recently that uh, he was told that he should have locked Hillary Clinton up when he got elected in 2016. But he said that wouldn't have been good for the country. Uh, four years later, uh, we, we kind of see the history that there is. Uh, but uh, after, of course, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton took the stage, you had other speakers, Jamie Raskin, a, a member of Congress, uh, addressing the crowd as well, uh, talking about Trump and Republicans. Uh, criticizing them and giving them a new moniker. Donald Trump fell asleep. There we go. Now we fight in our time to defend our freedom and our democracy against the banana Republicans who have converted Lincoln's party into a dangerous 
cult of personality. So uh, the the banana Republicans, uh, that might be a new uh, catchphrase that uh, Democrats use throughout the week. Uh, We'll obviously see how that goes. Uh, But uh, clearly the DNC uh, has had to change pace within the past month. Uh, the, the platform uh, was reported to have contained, uh, you know, the, the uh, President Joe Biden's second term several times throughout it. Uh, surely they had to clean that up before they approved it. Uh, and some of the other platform issues, uh, including issues impacting the Second Amendment, as we heard in the previous segment, uh, Tammy Duckworth talking about wanting to get a national FOID card, the FOID card being uh, an Illinois, you know, ID, that state police issue, uh, but uh, a whole host of other things in that platform as well. Uh, so you can seek that out and, and, and unpack that. Uh, but uh, you've got Joe Biden, uh, who ultimately was the the candidate until he stepped down. So the DNC had to really change gears, uh, and they featured him as the speaker on Monday night. Here's just some of what he had to say. Let me ask you, are you ready to vote for freedom? Are you ready to vote for democracy and for America? Let me ask you, are you ready to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walz, President and Vice President of the United States? A lot of signs uh, saying, uh, we love you, Joe. Uh, We love you, Joe. A lot of uh, chanting. Uh, But uh, Biden went on to talk about uh, his history and uh, his his accomplishments with the economy. We've gone from economic crisis to the strongest economy in the entire world. Record 16 million new jobs. Record small business growth. Record high stock market. Record high 401ks. Wages up. Inflation down, way down, and continuing to go down. But uh, clearly a lot of uh, uh, concerns and critics uh, saying that the economy is not great. Uh, You've got inflation that continues to go up. While it might not go up at the rate it was right after Biden took office, you still have uh, inflation inching upwards uh, even more, uh, not as the rate it was before, but still people are paying more than they were four years ago. Uh, He also talked about the border situation, uh, something that's of a a lot of concern for people across the country, including in Chicago here as the DNC is ongoing with non-citizen migrants uh, continuing to to take taxpayer resources. He continues to lie about the border. Here's what he won't tell you. Trump killed the strongest bipartisan border deal in the history of the United States. Uh, Biden also, uh, you know, he talked about. Uh, then I had the, to take executive action. He talked about trying to shore up the porous border uh, after saying that uh, Trump killed the bipartisan deal in Congress, but that bipartisan deal had a lot of things that uh, the majority of Republicans uh, said was not going to uh, be good for the country, including uh, possibly giving amnesty to a lot of people who are here. But more from Biden. Then I had to take executive action. The result of the executive action I took, border encounters have dropped over 50 percent. In fact, there are fewer border crossings today than when Donald Trump left office. And people may look at those numbers and scratch their heads, uh, because if you look at it since Biden took office and the jump of border crossings, let alone the the gotaways that you don't know exactly how many there were. Uh, but the final moments from the uh, convention last night. Harris hugging Biden. And now we get ready for day number two. Uh, So we'll get you the latest, of course, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell with America's Talking Network and Illinois in Focus daily as I'm on the road here. Different setup uh, as the sun comes up behind me. uh, We'll definitely uh, be back at it tomorrow here with Illinois in Focus daily. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell at America's Talking Network.